Now let us see one example of data scraping from websites. You can see here I have a page on my local where we have some fields here, five fields and corresponding to that we have created a Excel table. So I have added all the headers and then I also have a next link. I click on next then it moves on to the next record. I want to extract all the records in the Excel sheet in different rows one by one. So let's see how we would be performing this data scraping part. You can see on the location or the URL of the page, I have PG1 for page 1, PG2 for page 2 and you can see with the index number I can easily move over to any page. Let us try to automate this very simple page. Generally we don't get this kind of simple navigation but we have some complicated type of navigation which opens up maybe using a page scroll or clicking on next button or some other actions. So let us start with the simple one. So I add the libraries Microsoft HTML object library and internet controls. So dem IE as internet explorer, dem HT as HTML document. I initialize the browser set IE equals new internet explorer. I make it visible then I navigate to the URL. So IE dot visible equals true and then IE dot navigate. Now since this is a local URL I can give the file path and it would be taking me to the first page. Alright so we have opened up the page right and after that I can add a statement to wait until the page loads. So do until IE dot ready state equals ready state underscore complete and IE dot bz equals false and till the time the page is not loaded right it will stay inside the loop and inside the loop I am adding do event so that the excel do not get stuck and I am still able to perform all the events on the excel file alright so that's the basic that we have built up from last couple of lectures now moving on to this example of data scraping okay so I surround this wait statement inside a for loop and not just the wait statement but I'll be performing more actions inside it. I'll be telling you why I've added this code in the for loop. So for now let us find the last available row in the excel sheet where we need to write the data which we will be extracting from the portal. So that would come from sheet one dot cells rows dot count comma one and excel up dot row plus one. Right remember you need to add plus one otherwise it will keep on overwriting to one row only. So sheet one dot cells now this is the last row variable lr comma one right so I'm talking about the first column right in the last available row where we need to write the data I'm talking about first column what would be the value that value will come from the page right so this value I need to extract so I would first go to the page and inspect the value for sin I need to have this sin there. And before I try to extract any element, I need to set the document. So set ht equals ie dot document. Now I inspect this sin. I can see here we have the ID for this sin and the number is inside here as the text. So let us see whether we have a unique element here whose ID is sin. So I can check uniqueness here in the developer options itself. Just hit control F on the HTML source and then you can search the element using text or maybe using xpath or css selectors. So if I put a hash sin that means I am looking for all the elements who have tag name as a and hash means id. So all the elements with tag a and their id should be sin. So I get one here that means that element is unique on the page. Alright. So element by id sin as the id and then dot inner text. I need to get the inner text and write in that cell. Now in the similar fashion you can extract all other fields for example company name status and the registration number and put in different columns of the excel file. The next action is clicking on this next button so that we reach to the next page and perform the same set of operations for the next page. So you can see here we have href and the href is actually changing with every page. .pg2.html is the href for the second page. And let's try to find this element using the tag anchor. You can see that we have more than one elements present for this match. So I cannot use get elements by tag name directly. But I'll be using this property to find the right element and then perform click operation. Because one property is unique for this particular element which is text. So 
set lms equals ht dot get elements by tag name. Now iterate through all the elements so for each element lms and it ends with next and I put a condition here that if lm dot I need to talk about one of the properties can I use href or can I use text let us try to use href we know that the references are not same the links are not same for all the pages it changes so if I try to search that it should contain html that would probably work for this example but in general practice nowadays we don't see dot html in the end of the pages all right so that's not the right approach instead if I use lm dot inner text and I say that this inner text should be next only if it contains next maybe in that case I want to click on that element so lm dot click if that is true now when it would be clicking on that link it would be actually loading a new page so loading a page takes time so that's why I added this block in the very beginning that when it moves to the next statement it should encounter this block first and it should wait for page to load right so it waited for the page to load it sets the new document it evaluated the last row again and then it fetches the sin number and then it clicks on the next button for that next page and similarly it will keep on moving and it will be extracting the data for all the records one by one so you can see here when we run it in unattended mode it extracts all the sin numbers one by one so in the similar way I also need to extract the name the company status ROC and registration number so I add a comment here for all these and I'll be adding a code statement for extraction of these fields one by one okay so first inspects the company name you can see we don't have any name or ID for this property but it is a tag TD which comes under this TR right TR is table row TD is table data T body is the parent one so inside the T body tag which is table body let's find how many T bodies we have we have only one and how many table rows we have under it so we have four rows under it okay so there is one table which has four rows and if we see the number of rows so first row is company name second one is status third one is ROC and fourth one is registration number so these are the four rows that we have for this table okay so we need to iterate through all the rows one by one and we need to extract the value of second column because the value would be in second column in the first column we have their names which is like company name and company status okay so sheet one dot cells lr comma two dot value ht dot get elements by tag name what is the address for that element that would be inside the t body and under that t body we need to go to a particular row okay so get elements by tag name okay t body i put here and i put an index zero because we have only one t body here on the page and then under that also i need to go to another tag which is table row so i put another get elements by tag name tr which is again the first row because I want to extract value from the first row because first row is having company name so I put zero as an index and inside that row I need to extract the second column so get elements by tag name td I put one here for the second column okay so let's see when I run this am I able to get the company name or not if I am successful I'll be putting the same logic for other fields as well I add a watch here I can see that we have the first company here and I let the code to run so in the Excel I should have the names for all the companies so this works absolutely fine for the name as well so so far we are able to fetch the sin numbers using the ID and the names using this logic now let us have a look at the third one the third one is looking a bit different because it is red in color so maybe some difference in properties let's have a look at the properties let's inspect this element so we can see we have multiple rows here in the HTML four rows now this is not in the TD directly but under that TD we have a paragraph and under that paragraph we have a span and we have also checked here that we have only one tag with the name span present on the entire page so we can directly use the tag name as the locator strategy so get elements by tag name span and then index zero dot value so this would work absolutely fine you need not give that complex logic that we have used for the previous value moving on to the third row 
so first row we are done second row we are done for the third row if i expand i again see two tds so i use the same logic that i've used for the name i put it here and then i would be just changing the row index so here i put the column fourth because i want this value in the fourth column and the row index tr which is here is two right so zero one and two that's the third row similarly for the registration number i need to put here the fourth row which is having index 3. So I will be changing the column number as well as the index of the row number. We are done with the changes. Let's try to run this code and see whether we are able to do this entire data scraping using this code or not. So it has extracted all information in the Excel table format. Alright, so that's how we do scraping. We'll see another example in the next video.